Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the data. Hey everyone, I'm Tim McConaughey and welcome to The Shortcut. Today we're going to talk about something I think gets glossed over a lot these days, and that's the fundamental difference between traditional networking and how we have to approach it in the cloud. I was actually having a discussion with a friend of mine the other day about what makes secure cloud networking solutions like Aviatrix important and different. And in the course of the discussion, I realized something that basically if you've never tried to build a cloud network, you're not going to appreciate the table stakes that traditional networking uh, has kind of given us over the last 30 years. So, you know, so when I say th something like uh, Aviatrix gives you routing intelligence and it orchestrates routing tables and, and things like that, you'd probably be like, well, so what? My own prem router has been doing that for 30 years. So things like dynamic routing, subnets, route tables, VRFs, all those things exist in enterprise and they're ubiquitous, right? Um, you, you couldn't imagine buying a router without those capabilities. So, but with the cloud, that's exactly what you're doing. You're, you're using cloud native constructs and they give you the barest minimum of control and granularity and no real visibility on the packet flows. So, you know, the eyes, ears, and brains that you've taken for granted for years, they're gone. So when someone says, Aviatrix gives you routing intelligence, visibility, and control, that doesn't sound all that impressive without understanding what you're losing by going into the cloud. So I think of native cloud networking like those Cisco smart switches that have the web GUI for config instead of a CLI. You don't use the CLI, which has full control of the entire config. Instead, you use the options that are modeled in the GUI. So if they made a button for it, if they made a drop down, then you can do it. So now I know in real life, the Cisco smart switch has an advanced mode. You can go into the advanced mode and, and, and it exposes you know, a ton more options. But, but my point's kind of the same you basically have access to what's exposed, what's made available, what they built a GUI for. Uh, and even in the case of like AWS CLI, I, I, I say GUI, but really I'm, I'm using CLI there as well. You only have access to what they've exposed for you. So uh, it reminds me a little bit of like APIs, for example. Anybody who's been coding with APIs for a while understands that if you want to do something via the API, they had to have built the API for the thing that you want to do. So it's very similar with cloud networking. My point is kind of the same. You have access to what's exposed, but you don't have control of the underlying infrastructure. And for infrastructure people, that's a pretty tough pill to swallow. All that's a roundabout way to start comparing the two. I'm not going to compare and contrast with some goal of saying which one is easier or harder. I'm not doing anything like that. My goal is to try to help the enterprise engineers who have taken all of routing and switching for granted to try to bridge the gap to cloud networking so they can understand that the table stakes are very different. If I explain where the starting point of where cloud native networking lives today, then I can start showing off the solution that kind of blew me away, which was Aviatrix. And it's going to make sense. It'll actually seem impressive. So when we talk about architecture, the cloud gives us a lot of freedom, but it also abstracts and obscures a lot of it as well. In a traditional architecture, there's a lot of distance between workloads and users and, say, the internet or untrusted networks. And the cloud kind of obviates the need for that kind of design, and it lets you connect resources directly to the internet if you want to. And it gives you a few native options, no visibility on, on that connectivity. And so both the decisions and the risks are kind of up to you. And that makes visibility and security more important than ever, but the way the cloud networks are built and the cloud native constructs are kind of exposed to you, they actually make it harder to do, make it a lot more difficult. So. You have the freedom to change things, of course. You can design your own architecture. You can set up things like firewalls, centralized ingress, egress, but it's kind of all on you to do, and you're kind of arbitrarily building it out of the whole cloth that they've exposed for you to work with. And it's, so it takes a lot of uh, manual orchestration of all the constructs. And because of the obfuscation of infrastructure and the ability to connect the workloads directly to the internet, the cloud needs to be secure. So unlike a traditional network where we're just where we can insert a firewall in the path and it's very simple the cloud spreads everything out and it makes security far more difficult so while firewalls controlling internet access seems obvious and simple and again kind of table stakes for a traditional network it actually poses much more of a challenge to do effectively where cloud networking is concerned 
Okay, and the last point I want to touch on here is the perspective shift that's needed when talking about cloud networking. The traditional perspective is that the cloud should be a resource that users connect to, and so cloud networking is primarily focused on what's the best way to bring the cloud into an enterprise design. So SD-WAN type solutions work this way because they have to. SD-WAN is a solution focused on a different problem. It's focused on WAN connectivity involving the best transport, the best app experience between all those WAN options and, and building that fabric over the WAN. And with, so with SD-WAN, the cloud connectivity is focused on bringing the cloud into the SD-WAN fabric for users, or rather, the, should I say the cloud edge, really, into the SD-WAN fabric for users. And the challenges that are being solved aren't cloud challenges, they're WAN-focused challenges. Uh, you know, again, perspective shift. So cloud-focused networking views the cloud as the network, where the workloads live, the application value is kind of built and, and put together. So cloud-focused networking is built on solving cloud networking challenges and ensuring that workloads are secure, resilient, optimized, all, that, all, all those fun words, right? So, and then, then we focus on how users should be brought to those workloads to access them. So it's, so I know there might be some you know pedantic people out there that are shaking their fists and saying, well, you just said the same thing, but I think the perspective matters. So if I'm building an SD-WAN, as an example, my focus is on connectivity across transports, how to best leverage the circuits I have, and I'm just viewing the cloud as an off-prem data center. So I'm mostly concerned with how do I bring the cloud edge into my fabric so that I can, you know, from the fabric, connect to the cloud. And the tooling that I have is focused on the WAN. It's not focused on the challenges of the cloud or the networking constructs of the cloud at, at really at all. So then with a solution like Aviatrix, I'm focused on solving the networking challenges inside the cloud. So it's built for the cloud, not just the cloud edge. And I'm looking outward over my direct connects, private circuits, basically all the options I have to connect outward from the cloud to my uh, partners, you know, like Equinix or you know, the enterprise edge to let users access the cloud workloads. So that's a, that is a different perspective. And when we're talking about design engineering, the perspective matters a lot. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Uh, I wanted to get out what I'd kind of been thinking about since I had that discussion, and I, I think I did. And now I can kind of move forward with talking about Aviatrix and the problems that it solves, and hopefully we're kind of like level ground there, um, which I'll tackle next. But I'd like to know uh, what you think. Do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? Is there some part? Uh, mostly did I forget anything? Because I'm sure I did. Um, you know, I'm still working on the cloud myself, so... Uh, working on understanding the cloud, learning the cloud, and 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 designing within the cloud. So I'd love to know, did I forget something? Uh, did I miss something? Do you completely disagree? Uh, let me know in the comments below.